Coming up, the squeeze box touch, a brand new Sony phone, an HP printer with apps, and some clicky keyboards. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit Stamps.com, click the radio microphone, and use the offer code BEFORE YOU BUY. And by Ford. Featuring the My Ford Mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles, the My Ford Mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. So welcome to Before You Buy. I love this show because it's a product review show that's a little different. We get the products in and we ask the members of the TWIT staff to review them. In this case, we've got uh, one of our newest. Are you our newest employee? Not technically the newest. Karsten's got me beat by like a week. Josh Windish is here. Josh, you're running the Tech Guy website, right, for the radio show? Yeah, yeah, that's very exciting. It's looking great. We're going to launch it soon? Uh, yes. I've been saying that every week. It's about a week away, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's perpetually a week. No, it's coming soon. It really is. Some, sometime uh, probably end of this month, early August, we'll be able to uh, see it. But it is great if you've uh, had a chance to play with the beta site. It's really nice. And all that data is being entered by Josh, so I, re I really appreciate it. What did you review for us today? The Logitech Squeezebox Touch. It's their higher-end music player that can play music over Wi-Fi and stream Internet radio stations. You know I love Internet radio. Let's take a look. Hey, I'm Josh Windish for Before You Buy. I'm an editor here at Twit, and today I'm reviewing the Logitech Squeezebox Touch. Now, this is the higher-end squeeze box that Logitech offers. But what the heck is a squeeze box, you ask? Well, it's a good question. It's a Wi-Fi music player and internet radio device. Now, first impressions out of the box, I have to say it feels like a well-built, solid piece of hardware. Comes with a 4.3-inch capacitive touchscreen display. That part I'm actually not that thrilled with, though. It's a very low-resolution screen, so it doesn't look that great. They also use a plastic covering on here, which means it's very susceptible to getting scratched and scuffed. Now, if you don't want to use the touchscreen, it comes with a very nice remote. feels great in your hand. And the cool part about the remote is when you use it with the squeeze box, the display actually adjusts to accommodate viewing it from further away. So the text gets bigger, becomes easier to navigate. And then when you touch the screen again, it goes back to the usual touch interface. They also offer free apps for Android and iPhone and iOS, so you can use it on the iPad or your phone. And actually, I think that's the best way to use the squeeze box. Now, what differentiates this squeeze box from the other ones that Logitech offers is its ability to output very high-quality audio, 24-bit at a sample rate of 96 kilohertz, and the outputs on the back are very high-quality, too. Now, of course, you get the, the, the standard 8-inch headphone jack, but you also get stereo, RCA, digital optical, and digital coax. And then, of course, you see here the Ethernet jack and the USB port on the back here, too. Now, as far as the setup process goes, it's easy and quick. In just minutes, you'll be playing music. Now, the thing I didn't like about the setup process is the fact that you have to create a Squeezebox account to use it. Now, that being said, you can do a lot of cool stuff with that account. You can adjust your settings from a browser window. You can also keep your Squeezeboxes in sync, so if you have more than one, it'll definitely come in handy for that. Now, the software on the actual squeeze box, I am not a big fan of. It's slow, it's frustrating to use, things aren't always where you'd expect them to be, but you can access a wide variety of internet streaming stations on here, including every genre music station you can think of, talk stations, sports, even local radio stations you can find on here, and I was actually surprised to see how many local radio station streams the squeeze box was able to play. And what's really exciting, you can listen to Twit Live on here. I just did a simple search for Twit, and Twit Live came right up, so I was definitely happy to find that. Now, it also supports apps. You can download apps from all of the major internet streaming services out there, including Spotify, Mog, Rhapsody, Pandora, Last.fm, Slacker. There is one that's missing, though, and it's a big one, RDO. So if you're an RDO subscriber, unfortunately, at this time, you're out of luck with the squeeze box. Now, of course, you can stream your own music from your own home network, uh, you kind of have to know what you're doing for that, but it's relatively straightforward. You just download the free Logitech media server software to your computer, and you can stream uh, your library from here. 
Uh, it supports pretty much every audio format you have, so that's, a, that's definitely a plus. But where things start to get a little bit messy is when you use external storage in the form of either a secure digital uh, card on the side or the USB port on the back, plugging in external storage there. Uh, it does not handle that very well. It actually takes a long time for it to, to uh, scan through your media. And then once it does that, it doesn't really handle media from different sources very gracefully. Now onto the pros and cons of the Logitech Squeezebox Touch. First of all, the pros, plenty of outputs on the back here, including analog and digital options, which is nice. It supports a wide variety of audio formats, plays audio in high quality 24-bit with a sample rate of 96 kilohertz, and actually you can get a higher quality if you download a free plug-in. And it's easily expandable. You can add more squeeze boxes to create a multi-room setup. Now the cons, unfortunately, the software is slow and frustrating to use. It's a low resolution screen, so not much to look at. No internal battery or speakers, so you have to have this plugged into power or into, uh, and also into speakers at all times. And it's pricey, $299. So buy, try, or don't buy? I think I'm gonna have to go with don't buy on this. For just shy of $300, I think I would want a more complete solution, something that would be able to connect to my TV and handle video as well as audio. Well, that's my review of the Logitech Squeezebox Touch. I'm Josh Windish for Before You Buy. Okay, I don't buy. You know, this has been a great product line. Uh, Logitech acquired it. I remember it in the early days. It was about the only way to play MP3s from your computer onto your home stereo system. Um, Seems like this would be good for, it's a lot of money, but for a bedside table maybe? or uh, Actually, it doesn't really do that very well because it has to connect to external speakers. So you've really got to put this by your stereo. And the thing is, as far as I'm concerned, the only people that might be interested in this, in this particular model of the squeeze box, are serious audiophiles that are not interested in video or anything right. else. They just want to stream high-quality audio. And for that, I'm not sure if they'd be looking for this. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. We'll look forward to the Tech Guy uh, site launching very soon. All right, now, this is going to be fun, and I think, <laughs> if I don't stumble, we're going to get up and walk over to talk to Nicole Lee. She's got the new Sony phone, the uh, Xperia Ion, the newest Sony phone. Before we do that, though, uh, come with me a little bit. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, our sponsor for the show today, Stamps.com. I've mentioned them before. Stamps.com is a great way to get your uh, mail done without heading to the post office. As we all know, the post office can be, uh, you know, long lines, lots of parking. Wouldn't it be cool if you could print your own legal U.S. postage from your printer, your computer? Well, you can with stamps.com. This is the scale you get, by the way. I'm going to show you in just a second a no-risk trial offer that includes a digital scale. It's a USB scale. You plug it into the computer. You pop your letter on there or your package, and you always get exactly the right postage. Stamps.com lets you print right on the envelope, which is very nice with your company logo. It looks really professional. Mail any size package, letter, postcard, anything you mail. And the best part about Stamps.com is the mail carrier will come to you, pick up the package, and deliver it uh, all at the same price. Stamps.com even gets discounts you can't get at the post office. Things like 21% off express mail and 15% off priority mail. If you're doing international mailing, Stamps.com handles that beautifully they even print out the forms for you and this is a real tip for a pro tip for ebay sellers amazon sellers stamps.com will take the information from the website fill out all the forms do all the postage makes it so easy to do the fulfillment i love stamps.com and i want you to try it we got a no risk trial offer visit stamps.com before you do anything else you see that 80 dollars offer nee, don't do that click the radio microphone in the upper right hand corner and it'll turn into oh you got to use the offer code before you buy that's one word before you buy and it'll turn into a hundred ten dollar bonus offer including the digital scale including fifty five dollars free postage coupons for you to use and, and of course a month's free trial of stamps.com give it a shot I think you'll like it stamps.com click the try it free button that that radio microphone in the upper right hand corner and use the offer code before you buy I think you're gonna like it by the way you can cancel it anytime the scale is yours to keep now, let's take a walk over to the know-how set, uh, because that's where Nicole Lee, our producer, is with a brand new phone. This is the Sony Xperia Ion, an Android phone. Yes, it is. Now, Sony made a big deal about, they were doing this with Ericsson, about separating from Ericsson, doing their own thing. This is one of the first Sony-only phones. Shall we take a look? Yeah. We got your review right here. I'm Nicole Lee for Twit and Before You Buy, and here I'm reviewing the Sony Xperia Ion for AT&T. Now the Sony Xperia Ion is a, uh, I would call it a mid-range Android smartphone, 
But just because it's mid-range doesn't mean it's full, doesn't mean it's not full of features. It comes with a um, 1.5 gigahertz dual core uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. It has a ni very nice 4.6 inch display. Um, it has a 1280 by 720 uh, resolution, which Sony calls the HD reality dis resolution, which is means it, it, it does look very good in um, indoor lighting. However, in um, outdoor lighting under bright sunlight, it does wash out quite a bit. Now, even though it has an older operating system on here, Sony has said that it is upgradable to ICS in the future. When in the future, I'm not quite sure, and I definitely hope it's sometime soon. Sony has its own proprietary um, UI on here called uh, Timescape. Um, the way I see it, it looks as if Sony was trying to make their own version of Gingerbit look more ice cream sandwich-y with the way the app drawer is, the, with the way the icons are sort of arranged and designed. I do think it's a little bit dated. I find it quite unrefined. I just wasn't really a big fan of the Timescape um, UI. I just find it really dated and kind of clunky. As for the phone's design itself, as you can see here, it's kind of a, the usual typical big blocky uh, smartphone design, sort of an interesting curved back right here, very sort of squared off corners. Again, this is not really up to par with um, Sony's more recent smartphones like um, the Arc, which has a nice sort of clear th uh, see-through transparent uh, de design to it. This has a much more sort of old-fashioned last year design for Sony. And underneath the display, you do get the usual um, four Android uh, hot sensor keys to the menu, home, back, and search functions. On the side here, you get the usual um, USB port as well as a micro HDMI port, which I'll get to later. On the side here is a power uh, screen lock key as well as the volume keys. On the top here is the uh, headset jack. On the back is a 12 megapixel camera. And on the front above the display is a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera for video calls. As far as the camera quality goes, I thought it was pretty good. Under reasonable, you know, daylight, sunny conditions, I thought the photos were okay. Maybe not the best photos I've ever seen from a phone, but definitely uh, good enough for me. I did think um, the low light photos weren't that great. They seemed a little bit too noisy for my taste. The Xperia Ion has 16 gigabytes of internal memory as well as a micro SD card slot if you want to add more. Now, I did mention earlier that the Sony Xperia Ion comes with a micro HDMI port. Now, when you plug it up to a micro HDMI to HDMI um, cable, you will see a sort of a custom TV remote interface that lets you watch um, whatever's on your phone on a big screen television. It has a very, it's a custom television launcher or remote control is interface. If you do not want to use the micro HDMI uh, cable that I mentioned earlier, there's also DLNA compatibility, so you can watch your videos wirelessly. Another interesting thing about the Xperia Ion is that it is PlayStation certified. So you could go to the PlayStation Store on Sony and download Sony games onto the Xperia Ion, like, like Crash Bandicoot and more. Now for the pros and cons of the Sony Xperia Ion. The pros, it has a very nice display. The 4.6 inch display is very nice and colorful. I thought the performance was quite speedy as well. The 4G LTE speeds are quite impressive. Another great pro of this phone is that it's only $49 with a new two-year service agreement if you get it from Sony. If you get it from AT&T, it's around 100 bucks. So get it from Sony to save yourself some money. Uh, as for the cons of the Sony Xperia Ion, now I have a, quite a few cons on this one. This is definitely a personal uh, opinion right here. I find the design just a little bit too dated, a little bit too clunky for my taste. The fact that it comes with um, gingerbread instead of ice cream sandwich is a huge letdown for me. I know it's supposed to be like a budget $50 phone, but that is still to me a kind of a downside, especially since a lot of the budget smartphones these days come with ice cream sandwich already. Now for buy, try, or don't buy. I have to say this was a kind of a difficult decision. On the whole, I didn't really like the, the clunky old fashioned design and the older operating system threw me off. But that is only $50, so maybe it is good for some people depending on your budget. In the end though, I have to go with my first initial gut instinct, and that is don't buy. Even for $50, I probably wouldn't get this Xperia Ion. I'm Nicole Lee. This has been a review of the Sony Xperia Ion. 
<sighs> Sony, back to the drawing board. Hey, one thing I'd like to try, Nicole, and I think it's important that we always try this on these phones, is what it looks like outside. Should we go outside? All right, we're going to go outside. Chad has been waiting out here. And uh, this is the acid test for any phone, any display. How does it look in sunlight? I don't think it looks very good in sunlight at all. It's kind of hard to use. It's kind of hard to see, especially if it's super bright right now. It's not really, it's kind of foggy right now, but under really bright sunlight, it gets kind of sort of dim. And it's always a problem with all of these phones. I wish we could get some that really look good in, uh, in bright light. All right, don't buy. Sorry, Sony. Now, are you ready for another walk? <laughs> get ready. We're going to go all the way across the studio to say hello to Liz Romero. Uh, while we're walking... Uh, I might say, introduce Colin Weir, our technical director for today's show. Here's the beautiful TNT set, devoid of any staff whatsoever. Karsten Bondi is preparing the next This Week in Enterprise Tech. And finally, here we go. <laughs> Here's Chad's breakfast. And there we go. Here's Liz, Liz Romero. Hey, Liz. Hey, how you doing? I call her Liz Lemon. Hey, Liz Lemon. <laughs> uh, she's the woman you might see bouncing in the background all the time of my head though <laughs> what do you do here um, i've been dying to know <laughs> i'm lisa's assistant so i help with sales production and anything she needs i'm she you're, you're pretty much whenever anything needs to be done get liz to do it and lisa's desk is right there so we repositioned liz so she'd be <laughs> right out she literally can do the whip and she doesn't yeah it's right there <laughs> so what did you review for us today um i actually interviewed uh interviewed <laughs> i interviewed this printer yes, yes. the h it wasn't very talkative was it no it has a little sound effects so it has its own little speaker and everything in here it's all built in so this is wild because you know this looks so much like the hp nv laptop i guess that is what hp is going for this kind of mirrored glass top and this also like a laptop it has apps Let's take a look at your review, shall we? Hey everybody, this is Liz from Twit, and I wanted to give you a review on the HP NV 110 series. This is an all-in-one inkjet by HP, so we're just going to power it on and show you how it, it's a little fancy, you know, expanding, throw out everything with this nice little interface and easy to the eye look. So with the HP NV, it does have a lot of... A, about a decent amount of apps on here for an all-in-one. The problem is it's not the most user-friendly. A lot of times when I'm trying to scroll, even though I'm trying to scroll, it will activate an app. Um, for instance, it has DreamWorks. This is nice if you have kids, you can print out maps or you can do coloring books. That's nice, but the quality isn't good. So if your kids don't mind, good on you. Also another feature of the HP MV is that it has Facebook. Ooh, exciting. Takes a while to connect. Connecting. Okay. So one of the issues I found with the Facebook app is it actually only allows you to print from your albums or from tagged photos. So you're a little limited on that. And not to mention, it does take a while to print. It's not the most user-friendly or be best quality, unfortunately. This is a photo that I took of LA, and this is a quality I got. Couldn't really change anything. As another feature for the HPMV is it actually does a pretty decent job of copying when it's not photos. Every time I tried to copy a photo, it didn't look that well. But it does do a nice job when you have generic cartoons, or if you just have a plain black and white picture. So one of the nice features about the HP MV is that it is compact and nice if you just have one simple document to print off. Because as you can see with this guy and how compact it is, you don't have that much paper you can actually have into it. So I'm just going to print off a regular dock. And I actually have this hooked up by Wi-Fi. It's also connected by USB. But if you have a wireless network, you can have it so you don't have as much wires. And it still does obtain to that, keeping it compact and nice style. So from an inkjet, this is actually pretty fast. We're printing out three pages full of text. Now let me show you how it does varying for a photo print. So as you can see, here's how I'm comparing. So for the pros for the HP MV is that obviously it's nice on the eyes. Also it's nice and compact, it folds right up so if you have a kind of colored desk like I do, or if you're in a small space, if you're in college, it's nice to have it like that. But some of the cons are that it's pricey. It's about $250 when other all-in-ones, they are about $80. So right now it's on sale for $185, but 
that's still about $100 more than everything else on the market. Also, another con is that the quality, it's not that good. I haven't unfortunately been the most impressed. Obviously, these aren't photo paper, but they kind of leave more to be desired. Another con is that it's not the most user friendly. Trying to spit up Facebook, print from it, it was a little bit of hassle. I was making all sorts of noises, getting frustrated. So for a buy, try, or don't buy, I'm gonna have to give it a don't buy. Well, thanks guys, this is Liz from Twit, and I just gave you a review on the HP Envy 110 series. So an, a don't buy on the, uh, yeah. you know, it's nice design, but I didn't like the uh, HP Envy uh, laptop either. I think they've over-designed these and underperformed. HP used to be a great brand, just unfortunately they're not at the top of the game right now. Hey, do you, do you have anything you printed out? Can we see? Yes. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> You did this for Tony. I give him a door hanger. Oh, look at that! <laughs> That's he got cute. a door hanger from the DreamWorks app. Now, this is from one of the apps on the printer. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask, uh, does this mean do not disturb or come on in and clean up my room? Tony's a hard guy to read, so I'm just letting him interpret it however he's feeling each day, you know? <laughs> I want him to be, be expressive of his emotions. Liz Romero, thank you so much. Great review, really appreciate it. Look, we're going to continue on our quest to find one thing on this show that we think is worth buying. And we're going to talk about a keyboard in just a second. But while I'm walking over to Alex Gumpel's desk, let me talk a little bit about the Ford Motor Company. We love Ford, you know that. I drive a 2010 Mustang. And one of the things that's so impressive about Ford is this idea of making your automo... Oh, we're going to go this way. Okay. <laughs> We're going the long way around of making your automotive experience more powerful by allowing apps into your car via your smartphone. The My Ford Mobile app is such a great example. This is an app Ford did almost as a reference design. You know, they're encouraging other app developers with an API called AppLink to write software for the car. If you've got a 2012 Ford Focus Electric, and you should, what a great car. You could test drive it at an EV certified Ford dealer near you. Get the app. It's on BlackBerry, Android, and iPhone. And it does things like tells you where the car is, where the nearest charging stations are. You can use the app to find out the state of charge on your car, to even program the charging. You're sitting in the living room, the car's in the garage, you can press a button that says, only charge during off-peak hours. I mean, it really is very slick. It just shows you what you can do when you create a car that's a platform for people to develop apps for. It's a true 21st century car company, Ford Motor Company. Really great folks doing amazing stuff. And I know you're, you know, maybe you're not in the market for a car right now, but the next time you are, I urge you to go to your Ford dealer, test drive one, and if you get a chance, go to an EV certified dealer, test drive the Ford Focus Electric for 2012, and bring your smartphone with you so you can test drive the app as well. Ford Motor, Ford Motor Company. Find out more at Ford.com slash technology. We always say buy when it comes to Ford. Give it a Give it a test drive today. All right, Colin, are we good to go over to the Flowmaster? All right, come with me. We're going to see one more part of the studio you don't... Well, I know you see this all the time. This is the round table where we do Twit and MacBreak Weekly. This week in Google, all about Android. It, you know, it's kind of the center of uh, attention here at the Twit studio. But do you ever see what's behind this wall? Believe it or not, this is where we keep the engineering staff. Oh, look, Alex Gumpel in his native habitat... Actually, he's often in this mode. Alex works all night here. We call him the Flowmaster. Hey, Alex! Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get very TMZ on you and lean on this wall. So, Alex is the Flowmaster. What do you do exactly? Oh, I make sure the video works. <laughs> or something. You know, I, I hate to say it, but you got the keyboard imprinted on your... Uh, looks like the letter L. For the keyboard here. It's great for imprinting on your face if you... So, so Alex also hosts the TwitEdit facility update. Tifu. Tefu, yes. Uh, Tefu? Did I... I'm saying yeah. Tifu. Tefu. 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 Not Tifu. It doesn't actually matter, but we call it Tefu. Okay. What did you review today? So I have the uh, Das Keyboard Model S Professional. You mean like Das Boot? Yes, except Das Keyboard. Okay. Um, Who's this from? Uh, it's from Das Keyboard. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a German company, I believe. Um, and their goal was to make... Um, a keyboard that was comparable to the old IBM Model M, which had the clicky keys, and like that's like what a lot of people really like. We've talked before about this, the buckling spring. Yes, right. Uh, so this has this keyboard has. Um, okay. Uh, Mine, I. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Oh, I love yes, it. Yes, you can.
You can feel it. It clicks. And you can hear it. I mean, it really is solid. Oh, that is nice. So it's, it's got um, uh, the Cherry, Cherry MX, um, what was it, blue mechanical key switches with gold contacts, wow. which give it the clicky tactile uh, feel. That really feels good, I have to say. Yeah. How about the layout? It, it seems like a very standard layout, it's just, yeah? It's just a very basic 104 key, I think, layout. There's no media keys, no fancy anything. It's just keyboard. Is there a Windows key? Yes. Yes, there's a Windows key. Um, they also have make a Mac version with the, the command key and, and whatever else. Um, so it's uh, it's now it's built really solid and it's nice and kind of heavy and so if you're going to do a lot of work on it it's not going to break it's right. it'll last you for a good while. I really like this. It has the traditional T for the arrow keys. I I think even for gaming. I know this is not built as a gaming right. keyboard. This is a nice keyboard. Yeah, it, yeah, it'll work fine if especially if you're really picky. Now I've read that gaming keyboard before that uh, had mechanical uh, keys but didn't have the the buckling spring right. feel to it. I so like it's, that. It's, it's similar but different. Yeah, I am not. I'm not allowed to use these because they make so much noise. I can't use them on the air, and I miss these keyboards. I use mushy keys. You know, the traditional right. Apple keyboard. Now it doesn't have any of that feel or that sound or anything, or even the travel. I've, I've had to avoid using this uh, while you guys are doing shows in the living room at the round table because, <laughs> because it's it, clicky. It'll probably get picked up. So yeah. I've yeah. done it. But then we know you're working instead of sleeping. That's true. Yeah. Um, Yes. So pros and cons. So pros and cons. Uh, well, it's like it's 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 built solid, like I said. So it's it's very sturdy. Um, it, it has the, the IBM Model M feel. It's got the right keys, um, and it's really good for annoying Colin. <laughs> it's right over there. Uh, cons. Cons. Um, well, it's it's made out of glossy black plastic, which I hate. Fingerprints. Fingerprints. It just it looks it yeah. it looks great when it's new, but then once you right. start touching it, it'll right. just right. get smudgy. And and it's pretty heavy. I mean, in fact, it's yeah, really but, heavy. But that's not a bad thing because right. I mean, it, you have it on. You don't want it to slide. Yeah. yeah. So that's I consider that good. Um, it's got no media keys, which to me is a con because I like using the volume keys and play and stop and stuff, and I'm used to that. Um, but. It's not that big a deal if you don't really care. Right. Um, and then the other thing is, well, yes, it is very loud. And if you don't like annoying your coworkers, right. um, it can be annoying for people around you. So it's both a pro and a con. Right. Now, DOS keyboard does make um, a Model S silent keyboard, uh, which it, it's still mechanical, so it still makes noise, but it's not quite as loud. Seems like that defeats the point. I mean, this really is about being a chunky keyboard. Right. It, it's about the feel of, of that IBM. How much is DAS keyboard? DAS keyboard is $129.99. You know, that's not bad. We've seen keyboards like this for 200 bucks. Right, yeah, and it's and for the build quality and, and those and those keycaps, those switches are expensive, which is why most keyboards don't ever have those anymore. Right. So, it's yeah, it's good for the price. Buy? I'd say buy. Finally, we get a buy, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the. This would have been the first show where you had no buys. You well, saved us. I could say, don't buy it. No, 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 please. Okay. <laughs> then, yes, bye. Finally. Well, thank you, Alex. Always a pleasure. Alex really is great. And by the way, one of the things that I love about Alex, he, he collects vintage stuff. You see, he has an old Mac here. A lot of the uh, old computers that are around our studio are, are Alex from Alex's collection. So he knows a little bit about old IBM keyboards. And uh, for somebody so young, seems to have some pretty good taste for the vintage. Thanks, Alex. Uh, thanks to all of you. Yeah, go. Night, night. Whew. Didn't mean to disturb him. Hey, thanks to all of you. Boy, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the uh, set here at the uh, Before You Buy studios. Thanks to Nicole Lee, our producer, Colin Weir, our technical director, and to all of our reviewers, Nicole, Alex Gumpel, Liz Romero, and, uh, oh, and of course, Josh Windish. I can't forget him. Thanks to you for joining us. We do Before You Buy now at a new time if you want to watch live. That's every Tuesday around about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 2200 UTC. But the on-demand versions, both audio and and video are always available on our website, twit.tv slash BYB, or at iTunes or everywhere else that podcasts are aggregated. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. See you next time.